Yericho. Okay? Yericho. The word Yerach in Hebrew means moon. The inhabitants of Jericho in the Canaanite era worshipped the god of moon named Sin. Okay, so Yerach, Yericho, Jericho. Okay? That's the meaning of the name Jericho. Considered as the oldest city in the world, as I said, in this place has nine to ten thousand years of history. Of course, it, uh, it considered also as the uh, ancient city in the world. And when we are talking about a city, we're talking about two things. First of all, a place that is surrounded or enclosed by a wall, and also a place that has hierarchy. And that means that there is a, a mayor or someone, a governor or the head of the place. So a wall and a mayor, that are the conditions for city in ancient times. And there Jericho was the first one in history. And I'm talking about the year 3100 BC. And that means a little over than 5,000 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this place has a lot of history and we all know the conquest of Joshua and the children of Israel. When they crossed the Jordan River to get to the Promised Land, they captured 31 cities and the first one was Jericho. And the wall of Jericho fell tumbling down by the people that circled the road, let's say circled the walls of Jericho seven times and they blew the trumpets or they blew the shofar shofar is the ram's horn okay so when we're talking about this time of jericho we are talking about three thousand one hundred years ago okay or let's say hundred one thousand thousand two hundred okay as i said three thousand two hundred years ago do the BC again, I, I missed that. 100 or 2? No, no, no. When we're talking about the conquest of Joshua, we are talking about the year more or less 1200 BC. And that means 3200 years ago. Okay? Now, when we're talking about Jericho in the times of Christ, First of all, in this case, I would like to read something from you from the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, okay? That temptation. And I would like to take advantage of this place to read it for you because the amount of temptation can be seen over there. Guys, it's hard to see, but if you get closer to where I'm right now, you will see that there is a Greek Orthodox monastery over there. First of all, there is a cable car that goes up. Okay? A cable car that goes up. You can see the upper base of the cable car. Come closer, come closer, come closer. And also, if you will look left of the upper base of the cable car, you will see that there is a suspended monastery. You can see that, guys. I'm sure that you can see this monastery in the left side of the mountain. This is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over there. Up there. Up there. Okay? So this is the Greek Orthodox Monastery of Mount of Temptation. A lot of pilgrims used to go there and touch the stone. I'm sure that you all know that uh, it is... Sometimes it can be uh, an important... A, a relic or an important stone for Roman Catholics but also for Greek Orthodox okay so there is a stone that they believe that when Jesus was tempted by the devil he relied on this stone or maybe he leaned against this stone okay and I would like to read it for you right now from the Gospel of Luke <coughs> chapter 4 Satan tempts tempt Jesus. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. One, guy, one moment, guys. The story, this is the story that follows 
the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. So just geography, okay? Jordan River is, let's say, two to three miles further from this point, okay? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not far. So that's first of all. I would like to proceed, guys. So then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdom of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Mm. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, sat him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his, angel, his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Ladies and gentlemen, Luke chapter 4, the sudden tempts Jesus. Okay? Or Satan or the devil okay now guys this is a story that this is an event that is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke and the name Jericho is not mentioned here but it is a tradition since the Byzantine era about this place as the wilderness that is mentioned and because this event follows the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, which is not far from here. So since the fourth century, the tradition says that this is where Jesus was fast, uh, fasted for 40 nights, 40 days and 40 nights, and was tempted by the devil. So this is the first, uh, uh, the first reference of Jericho or the wilderness in uh, the Bible, in the, uh, uh, in the Gospels. I would like to mention one more mentioned in Luke chapter 19 and this is a story about a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, you remember Zacchaeus? Of course you remember. He was short in stature, okay? And Zacchaeus climbed on the sycamore tree to see the Lord when he passed through Jericho. So guys, on our way out of Jericho, we will drive through the place that according to tradition the sycamore tree was planted okay and we will see the sycamore tree i'm telling you from now right now this is not 2000 years old sycamore tree but as i said and i'm gonna use it a lot I'm telling you by tradition and guys we are in the holy land there are a lot of traditions Christian traditions, Jewish traditions, and Muslim traditions. And the next story mentions in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, Jesus healed two blind men on the main road of Jericho. So I'm sure that you also remember that. So that's regarding Jericho. And today, guys, 2000 years later, Jericho is a city in zone A of the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority entrance for Israeli citizens is completely forbidden okay the population is roughly 50,000 uh, uh, inhabitants very fertile in this place uh, some says that uh, some say that uh, 
the best fruits and vegetables in the Holy Land come from Jericho. And I can tell you that my grandfather was the owner of the fruits and vegetables market in Haifa in the uh, uh, early 70s. Okay, like almost 50 years ago. And he told me, he used to send his employees <coughs> with their trucks to Jericho to bring especially oranges from this place. So uh, guys, this is Jericho. Uh, it's considered as the ancient city in the world, the lowest city in the world, and the city of palm trees or date palms. In Hebrew, Ir Hatmarim. So guys, right now, I, uh, I invite you to, uh, uh, if for those of you who would like to get spices, or for those of you who would like to get dry fruits, like figs, or like dates, and believe me guys, these are the best dates that you ever tried. Uh, especially the Majhul dates. Okay? M-A-H-J-O-O-D. Majhul. M-A-H-J-O-O-D. <laughs> and these Majhul dates here are as good as Tunisian Majhuls. And Tunisia's... <laughs> Soka. Sugar. Sugar, exactly. Sugar. <laughs> so guys, you're welcome to go there. We have until you have 20 minutes, okay? 10 to 3, we'll meet in a bus, okay? Are there good prices over there? You can bargain. Yeah. You can and bargain. you can bargain. It's like a market here.